Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a deadly shooting yesterday in Bowling Green sent one officer rather to the hospital. And one Kentucky man found out how long he will spend in prison following a guilty plea to murdering a four-year-old. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, 531. Brandon Robinson along with you doing a little bit of news, doing a little bit of weather. It is Friday. Thank goodness for that. July 7th. And we have got a forecast that's going to feature some fog for you this morning. Let's see what we got going on downtown Hazard from Triangle Park. A little bit cooler here in town this morning and a bit of fog out there. So continue to be careful if you're traveling across our region this morning. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s again today. Third day in a row, 70 Ashland, Moorhead, Somerset, Harlan and Jonesville. 73 in Monticello, but 64 in Hazard, Clintwood and Wise this morning. Dew points front is stalled, so it's not quite got to us yet, so it's still a little bit muggy out there this morning, but I do believe that later today, once it moves through, we'll see those dew points start to drop as we go deeper into the afternoon hours. Now for today, overall, fog and clouds this morning, some sunshine by this afternoon, but stray rain chances off and on throughout the day, especially a little bit later on. Back to news. New this morning, there was an officer involved shooting in South Central Kentucky on Thursday that sent a Bowling Green police officer to the hospital. We do not have many details about the shooting yet, but we know it happened yesterday afternoon at Russellville Road. We are told the suspect in the case, a man who was not identified, was shot and pronounced dead at the medical center in Bowling Green. The officer is being treated for life-threatening injuries. Following the shooting, members of the community say they are, are a fear for their safety and the safety of their loved ones. It should make everybody feel scared no matter what community you in because there are so many crimes being committed. And you know, like it's, it's happening every day and it's time for everybody to pull together and get this, get, get it together. It's, life is too short. We got kids coming up. You know, we don't want nothing to happen to our loved ones. This man probably had a family to go home to. We don't know what might happen to him, but the violence just needs to stop. Officials with Kentucky State Police said they plan to release more information about the shooting later this morning. A grand jury has form, uh, formally indicted the man accused of killing a Scott County deputy. Police say 45-year-old Stephen Shingshang shot and killed De uh, Deputy Caleb Conley during a traffic stop on I-75 in May. Last month, Attorney General Daniel Cameron announced that his office was taking over the prosecution, prosecution against Shingshang. Yesterday, Cameron's office announced that a grand jury has indicted him on several charges in the case, including murdering a police officer, possession of a handgun, and wanton indictment. Endangerment. A man was arrested Wednesday morning after allegedly assaulting a police officer in Laurel County. Officials with the sheriff's office responded to a call that a man passed out near a business off of the West Cumberland Gap Parkway. Police say they found 38-year-old Jason Blevins and confirmed he was under the influence. Blevins reportedly told police he'd already been arrested for assault and he reportedly threatened to assault the deputy that responded. Officials say Blevins kicked and fought the deputy before he was arrested. He faces several charges including assault and resisting arrest. A Southern Kentucky sheriff is being ordered to pay thousands of dollars by a state cabinet, all because of an issue with back pay for K-9 handlers. Pulaski County Sheriff Bobby Jones says he was apparently making a mistake without realizing it, and now it's costing the department dearly. WYMT's Phil Pendleton talked with Jones about the issue and says the same mistake could be costly for other Kentucky law enforcement agencies. Pulaski County has two canines that the sheriff says is essential to the department. They give us the probable cause we need on traffic stops to search cars. That's a good boy. Their handlers are paid like normal deputies, but also earn an extra thousand dollars a year. Plus, the dog's food and vet bills are covered. Sit. But recently, Sheriff Bobby Jones learned that how compensation earned for taking the dogs home was not done correctly according to the state labor cabinet. Live animals that goes home with the, with the deputy and that we have to compensate them for you know, feeding, bathing, water, and all this kind of stuff. State says that compensation has to be entered as a line item in their budget. Now the sheriff's office has to shell out more than $61,000 for seven different handlers over a four-year period. I'm all about buy, buying by the rules, but you got to show me the rules. Show me what we need to be doing. The Kentucky Labor Cabinet told Bobby Jones that this all came about because of a complaint 
but they did not divulge who made the complaint against them. Deputies are essentially earning back pay money. I've had a couple of canines said, well, we're not going to take any money. And I said, you have to. I said, it's, it's your money. I mean, and I'm not upset with, they're not, you know, uh, I'm not upset with the canine handlers at all. Jones says the line item issue was not something the state sheriff's association or even the Kentucky auditor told him they were aware of. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Sheriff Jones says they are paying the money to the labor cabinet, and then that cabinet will send the money back out to the canine handlers. A former Kentucky state police trooper has died. Will Pope served as a trooper for both post 9 and 10 from 2016 to 2019. Officials say he resigned from that position to become a lineman. Pope had also served as a patrolman for the Harlan Police Department. Officials did not provide information on how he died. His funeral arrangements are pending. A man who took a plea deal following the murder of a child in Bullock County was sentenced to 50 years in prison yesterday. Dakota Hill pleaded guilty to the murder of four-year-old Serenity McKinney. When the young girl was reported missing in 2021, Hill was dating Serenity's mother, Catherine Abby McKinney. The girl's body was found in a wooded area along the Jefferson Bullock County line last year. Serenity's mother was already sentenced to 12 years in prison after pleading guilty to manslaughter. Serenity's family was outside the courthouse yesterday explaining how they want the four-year-old to be remembered. She would smile that would steal your heart in the giggle that was so contagious. That's how I want the community to remember her by, not by her medal examiner report. Hill is eligible for parole in 20 years and again a little and again in a little more than 40 years. Commonwealth's attorney Bailey Taylor says there is a slim chance it would be granted. In Whitley County, a man was sentenced to 70 years in prison for murder. Jordan Miracle was convicted of murder, robbery, and tampering with evidence. He is the third and final defendant to be sentenced in the 2019 murder and robbery of Billy Lawson. In Bell County, a woman is facing felony charges after she reportedly recanted her story about an alleged assault. The incident happened back in June at a home on Old Cross Road near Pineville. Police say Deanda, Sh Deanda Shaver reported that Donald Shaver Jr. knocked her out of her chair and tried to strangle her before swinging an axe at her stomach while she was pregnant. When Deanda appeared in court, officials say she confessed the story was not true. She was arrested and taken to the Bell County Detention Center. All charges except for one against Donald Shaver Jr. were dropped and he was released from jail. Staying in Bell County, we have an update to a story we first told you about last April. Former Bell County Coroner Clyde Creech was indicted on 38 charges of violating trust, provision, and one charge of theft. The crimes reportedly happened between 1994 and 2014. A new court order says Creech must go to the Kentucky Correctional Psychiatric Center for an inpatient competency evaluation before his trial. The evaluation was previously scheduled for March of this past year. Officials with the Urban Police Department are investigating after human bones were found Wednesday night. Police say the bones were found in a dirt driveway near a home on Oak Street. The homeowner was reportedly landscaping when those bones were found. The bones were identified as a femur and a clavicle, and they were sent off for testing. That investigation is ongoing. Drunk drivers will now have to pay child support for kids whose parent were per or killed or permanently disabled in a crash. Melanie's law went into effect on July 1st. Mothers Against Drunk Driving is an organization that does, uh, that does a lot of to spread awareness on this issue. Regional, Regional Executive Director Alex Adi says this helps hold drunk drivers accountable. This is another reason that people will think twice before making the decision to consume alcohol or other drugs and get behind the wheel. It is another level of accountability. It is another consequence that they can and will face. And so we hope it, it's just another reason for people to think twice before they make a dangerous and deadly decision. Audie says this will help with drunk driving, but she, she says other people with her organization, she and other people with her organization will continue advocating and working to prevent drunk driving. 
People across the nation are suffering from the effects of substance use disorders, and the problem is no different here in the mountains. Addiction recovery centers across the Commonwealth are receiving support with funding, programs, and more to make sure that communities big and small have access to those services. WIMT's Madison Carmouche talked with officials of, with a couple of those centers yesterday about getting help to people or getting people help to get back into the workforce. The CAREER ACT, or Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Through Effective Employment and Reentry, was introduced to be reauthorized with hopes of continuing to help those struggling with substance use disorders. But the next step after getting people the help they need is helping them to get back in the workforce. When it comes to employment, though, we have community partners that we partner with that help us find employers that are um, recovery friendly. And then we also work with employers that kind of help with people who are early in recovery get back into the workforce. While centers like Brightview do not qualify for a lot of the government funding, they work to connect their clients to different grants they may qualify for individually. So when the government puts out bills and, and allows money to be given to these organizations to help people in recovery, it just kind of gives them that extra support that's needed. I also feel like a lot of times our people in recovery don't realize that this money is out there. So that's why it's so important that our case manager and me as an outreach director or manager goes out in the field, identifies who, who has access to these pots of money, and then can bring that back to our clients. The bill helps facilities like Mountain Comprehensive Care Center support Kentuckians struggling with substance use disorders get back on their feet right in their own town. So being able to kind of get funding and do this kind of treatment and have these resources local, I think it helps a lot because a lot of times people are afraid to move far away from family or something because they need that support network. So having more funding and more resources available for this to keep them local, I think is a big important thing. Making sure that every community has the support they need to help their people get in recovery and stay there. In Pikeville, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. Senator Mitch McConnell and Congressman Andy Barr are working to reauthorize this piece of legislation so it can continue to save lives in our state. Coming up, Britney Spears had a close call when she tried to take a photo with an NBA rookie. And today we'll feel a little less humid later on, but we'll crank the heat right back up for parts of the weekend. Rain chances go back up too. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.